I flipped 50 different things so I could see what was living underneath. To maximize my chances of finding cool animals, I flipped a bunch of different objects in several different locations. Here's what I found. The first location I hit was this small stream and I wasn't too sure if I was going to find anything cool because it happened to be alongside a road. But I started flipping rocks anyway. Under the very first rock I swore I saw some movement but I didn't see any animals. I dug around a little bit and I found exactly what I knew I saw. This is a non-venomous and completely harmless queen snake. These guys eat almost exclusively freshly molted or soft crayfish. Under the second rock I saw a small burrow with crayfish down in it. Crayfish have exoskeletons and every once in a while they have to molt or crawl out of them to continue growing. This one just molted so it's super soft, which means it's perfect food for things like queen snakes. I found this tarp and decided to flip it and sure enough there was a snake. So I grabbed it. This is another queen snake. Obviously just a little bit bigger than the last one. Rock 3 had nothing. Rock 4 had a millipede, which was pretty cool to see. Every single time I flip this rock, there's been two snakes under it, and today is no exception. The one is the same size as I always catch, and the other is a little bit smaller than the one that I usually see under here. As I put those two back, another snake darted out of the rock next to it. This is a northern water snake, another non-venomous species. But they do have an anticoagulant in their saliva, and you're pretty much guaranteed to get bit if you pick one of these guys up. It didn't hurt, but even when this size marked me up a little bit. For the next 10 things, I didn't find anything, so I moved to the next spot. The next location were the woods behind my sister's house. I have a few different cover objects that I laid out a little while ago, so I'm going to flip them and see if there's anything cool underneath. First up is this pile of tin, and under the first one, there was nothing. But underneath the bottom one, I found a snake. This is a completely harmless eastern garter snake. Let's get a closer look. This one's about to shed, and you can tell by its clouded eyes. These things will eat pretty much anything they can get their mouths on, from fish to earthworms. I then flipped this piece of cardboard, and I found a millipede and a spider. I flipped another piece of cardboard, and there was another eastern garter snake under it. I set out these shingles made with asbestos. I wasn't finding much under them, until the last one when I found a snake. This is northern ringneck snake. They are technically venomous, but completely harmless to people. They don't have true venom glands, and the subspecies around me doesn't even have fangs so they really are nothing to worry about. I'm pretty sure that these are North American millipedes, but I am no bug biologist. I flipped a piece of plywood, there were too many ants, and a snail, as well as a slug. And then it was off to the next spot. This next location is back in the woods. We lost count, we're at thing number 26. And underneath there was a wolf spider. I'm not sure the exact species, but still pretty cool. 27 was this log and I found a millipede underneath. This is a black and gold flat millipede. They actually produce a cyanide as a form of defense. Underneath the next thing there was a slimy salamander. As their name suggests, they produce a sticky slime to stop things from eating them. It's hard to get off your hands. Under the next thing there was a ton of ants, and look at all those eggs. So cool. Object 29 had American toad under it. Those big glands are for producing toxins. Under the next thing, there was a centipede. Then I had a bit of a dry spell finding nothing underneath the next eight things. But I flipped a log and found another slimy salamander. This one's a lot smaller though. I always put the cover back very carefully. I promise I'm not crushing anything. Take a look at this slimy salamander. It's just fine. For the last 10 rocks, I went back to a stream, this time far away from the road. From thing 40 to 46, I was finding absolutely nothing. But underneath 47, I found a dusky salamander. Like most of the salamanders I find, they belong to the family Puthodontidae, so they don't have lungs. Underneath 48, a two-line salamander. Their name comes from the two black lines that runs down either side of their body. Underneath 49, there was another dusky salamander. This one was pretty camera shy though. And the very last thing that I flipped was a double flip. There was a crayfish and this dusky salamander. It's all over the place. I went ahead and picked up the crayfish and it was not too crazy about that. But that's alright. 